So YouTube, I recently spent the better part of the really two nights and a day um, in a DIY project to try and make a maxi skirt for a photo shoot I'm about to do. Uh, the DIY is, is hilarious. I figured it would be kind of cool to videotape because if it was an absolute train wreck, it would be hilarious to post it on my channel. Um, and if it wasn't a train wreck, it certainly was um, a non-traditional way of doing a sewing project. Uh, so if it came out really well, it might be a cool DIY to share uh, for those of us who aren't seamstresses. Uh, so what you'll see now is a series of videos um, that I'll try to piece together with step-by-step -step instructions of what I did. Um, not that anyone really should be taking any seamstress advice from me. I'm not particularly talented. Um, but I'm not unhappy with the product that I came up with. I think really I would say that I landed somewhere in the middle of a skirt that you'd be proud of that was made by a seamstress that actually had a pattern and stuff. Uh, and a skirt that somebody tied some fabric onto an elastic and called it a skirt. I'm somewhere in between the two of those, so I'm kind of, uh, I'm not unhappy. I wouldn't say I'm overwhelmingly satisfied, but I'm not unhappy, so there's that. Okay, so step one, figure out how to cut material without a pattern, because guess what? Finding a pattern for a maxi skirt that is also a tulle skirt is just not done. Right, so whatever the material is, tool, tooly, I don't know, again, not a seamstress. Uh, step one, figure out how to cut a lining so that I don't have that itchy netting right up against my skin in the pattern of a maxi skirt um, so that when you have someone who's as hippie as I am, and I don't mean hippie like free love, but hippie like got a lot of hips, um, I don't really want to, to make it look even bigger. Uh, so I tried to avoid that. I did get some of that effect anyway, because I think it's unavoidable once you attach Thule to anything. Um, but I had to figure out how to do a pattern. So I did, of course, what all non-seamstresses would do. Well, YouTube, I'm back again. And I don't know if this is for a good reason. <laughs> but it's certainly, I'm having a good time at it. So for those of you who sew, this is probably a nightmare scene. But for those of us who don't sew and who are just trying to have fun with our mastectomy reconstruction, I am working on trying to make a maxi skirt. I need to make a skirt um, that's really like a champagne or a beige for this photo shoot. So I decided today, again, if you're a sewer, probably a horror show, but I decided to use my favorite maxi skirt to try to make another skirt. So I'm about to show you a frightful scene of what is happening at this time. So hold on to your hats. So what's going on here? Mm -hmm. What you see there is beginning to be um, pinned on right here. Um, I'm definitely pinning my maxi skirt to my lining material um, that's been folded in half so that I have two sides because the girl needs a front and a back. Um, I'm gonna actually cut it a little bit wider um, than what's available except at the very bottom hem which can be sloppy because it's a one-time wear only kind of thing. So tonight's project bilateral mastectomy patient tries to turn into a seamstress can't even make a skirt pattern. And never mind, actually, um, know how to make a skirt. So this is going to be an interesting evening. Um, I do own a sewing machine. I know how to sew, but not garments. I've never made garments. Uh, sew a panel to make some curtains? Yes. Oh, you got a rip? I can sew that up. You want me to darn some socks? Probably not going to happen. Let's go buy you some new ones. So I'm probably one of the least um, sewing qualified people out there, but I'm gonna try. So I thought I'd vlog just in case it's successful. Or if it goes horrifically wrong, it'll be a really funny vlog to put online about the girl who tried. Um, the intent is to be used for um, 
one of my mastectomy photo shoots. So um, I'm not gonna spoil the surprise on that, but working on my photo shoot even now on a Tuesday afternoon, <laughs> evening, definitely evening, it's probably like 10 o'clock at night right now. Okay, well, I'll update you as we go. Well, first step done. Skirt. Still pinned to the lining fabric. So you can see here, these are still pinned together. But they are definitely separated. Right, so I cut it off from the original fabric. Uh, and then you can see the fold over down at that end where I... Um, folded the fold over so I could cut the material. So it's a moment of truth. I'm going to have to try and go figure out how to get this through a sewing machine. So material and skirt all pinned together. I put it in my sewing machine and got to sewing. I used a zigzag stitch to keep the seam stronger. It's called serging, which I had to Google. Uh, and I ran that down both sides until I ended up with a form of a tube. Strangely enough, 11.59, about to turn into a pumpkin. But I cannot go to bed without giving you a quick status update of where I'm at. Alright, so, same material you saw a moment ago. But, I did sew it together up both seams. So you can see... I have a, I'll say a pseudo skirt lining. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the pins and show you what I'm working with. Okay, YouTube, I'm about to tilt you down so you can see what I've accomplished without a pattern, but using a skirt as a pattern. Don't really know how to sew. This is just a liner. Gonna have some tule on top of it. Please don't mind the mom belly. And it's long enough even on the booty side. And there's a little slit at the bottom so that I have room to actually move around no matter how big my step. Actually, it feels really silky and super comfortable. Maybe this will turn into something. We'll see if the tool is itchy or the tool, however you say it. Uh, but so far, shocked and impressed. Moving on, I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow when it's not so yellow in here and I actually have like daylight. Well, YouTube is once again late at night and I'm working on this skirt. I should have taped, but I did take pictures and will include those. The process by which I attached this here tule to this here liner so I've only pinned it on I don't know if you can see that nice and close it's just pinned on um, and what I did is I gathered it literally the bolt is still whole um, and so at the bottom way down here you can see it's just literally it's a loop just I looped it so pin at the waist loop all the way to the floor, come back up, pin at the waist, loop back to the floor, over and over and over, all the way around the skirt. Now the reason y'all need to see the pictures is because I enlisted the assistance of my 17 year old son who looks like he's about 25 on a bad day, some people have given him as much as low 30s. Uh, manly man, masculine, goatee, the whole nine. So, I'm gonna insert those pictures for y'all right about here. So as I mentioned, I started at the waist and worked down to the floor and then back up again, uh, and then back to the floor and back up again, and I continued all the way around until I got to the back. And by the time we were about here, my friend Megan walked in and took this video. Actually done. Mm, boy. Oh, girl.
Mm hmm. My son, wearing a Thule maxi skirt with a performance liner all tied up on his body. Brilliant. I absolutely adore him. So tonight, I'm hoping to once again enlist the help of brother. Get it? I know, not funny. It's late at night. Uh, to sew the tule onto the liner. I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do the elastic. I do have an elastic um, that I that I don't. It's not necessary because the performance material is performance. So it's like stretchy, kind of spandexy, silky. It's kind of cool actually. But I don't think I think if I don't give it an elastic at the top. There won't be enough structure at the top, and the seams may give way. Did I mention? Not a small girl. So, uh, stay tuned. Right now, about to get to trying to sew some thick-ass layers of tule onto a really thin performance material. So this should be a blast. Middle of the night, perfect time for some work that might be frustrating. Leave it to me to do some piss-poor planning. On this part, the most frustrating segment was really just holding on to the tule or tool and trying to get it pushed through and then adjusting the skirt underneath the arm of the sewing machine over and over, pulling pins, pushing tool and skirt. It was rough. So the next step that I did to my tule maxi skirt was to put on the elastic. Well, I got so caught up, because it's the middle of the night, that I ended up pinning it in without showing you guys. So I took the elastic, and I lined it up with the seam that I had already sewn. So this is on the inside of the skirt, the seam of where I sewed the tule on. So here on the outside, you can see kind of like the thin line where I sewed the tule on. On the inside, I used the excess lining that I had intentionally left above this um, tule edge and I took it I laid the elastic against that seam so the bottom of the elastic is against that seam I took the lining and I folded it over like so and I pinned it all the way around and then I sewed it so you can see here the elastic is showing there that's because this tule I mean this uh, lining material is really stretchy so except where I've sewn it, so if you look you can see the sewing but then right here it wants to roll up. I probably will sew a second layer tomorrow like right down right next to the elastic but it's really hard because it's right up against the tule. So I, as I said, I pinned it and then I sewed it and I aimed for center of the elastic. So you can see there's a seam right here running across the center of the elastic but when the tule stands up it should not show. Um, it actually can show in some places because this is inconsistent. Um, so if I want to, while the dress, while the skirt is on, I can literally, because this elastic is nice and firm, it has structure to it, I can literally turn it under and it will still. So I, you see what I've done here is this is it standing up. I reach inside my waistband and tuck it under like so. And then it looks like there's just tule stuck to my body. Another thing that I chose to do was to leave the skirt um, with the ends of the elastic not sewn in. Now I did that on purpose because this is a one-time wear for me, but it may be something that's useful for my photographer. So my intention is to um, potentially give this to her if it's something that she likes and she may find useful in the future. But that bigger than your average person who would ask for photos. So I've left this so that if she has someone who's a smaller size, you could take this elastic and tie it in a quick square knot. In a photograph, no one will know. So, let's have a look. The new Cinderella. And then also I wanted to show you that I can, this is the waistband thing I was saying, see how it's kind of showing right here? 
But then if I just take that elastic waistband, which is down to here, I can literally tuck it under all the way around, and voila! And I say goodnight to all my friends at YouTube. So perhaps I'll string together a few videos um, about how to make a ridiculous on the fly Tully maxi skirt with zero planning. Just throw another maxi skirt on top of a liner and get your ass started. Ridiculous. So there you have it, YouTube. Heather, the non seamstress, trying to sew up some stuff. I did already talk to my photographer and say, here's what it looks like. Um, she said she'll work with it and that it's going to create the photographic effect she's looking for. And thank God, because that skirt took way too long to make. Um, even though it was fun to videotape it for you guys. So I hope that you really liked the project. And um, even though it's not directly related to uh, mastectomy and reconstructive surgery, in a way it is because the photo shoot relates to commemorating the process. Uh, I am doing this photo shoot topless. All I'll be wearing is that Thule skirt and um, and the photographer is going to sort of document what I'm going through. But we're going to try and make it fun. And I don't want to ruin the surprise by telling you what it is yet. So that's how the skirt ties to mastectomies uh, and really honoring the process that I'm going through that two or three or five years from now is going to feel like, I mean, it was some stuff. Yeah, I went through some stuff. Right? I'm going to forget about it. This is going to have been a blip of weeks and months of my life that are no longer strongly negatively impacting me. And I, I really do want to honor this woman who's actually struggling um, to, you know, make sense of what I'm living through and, you know, not stress out and not be a mess over, you know, the mastectomy itself and its impact on my body and on my emotional well-being. So stay tuned for that. Why do I always go to that side where the refrigerator is? Subscribe! And you can um, continue to follow the journey.